You ever watch a movie or play a game that makes you wonder why? Why was this made? Why did anyone think this was a good idea? And what did they hope to achieve with it? That's the best summary I can give music by Sia. Why? Spoiler and trigger warning for the movie. The movie can be triggering to people on the spectrum. I know this because I watched the movie with two friends who are, and let's say that they did not enjoy it. Neither did I, hence this video. Video, you've probably heard of music. It's been in the news a lot due to how horribly it's represented autism as a whole. Ever since it was announced, people have been against it, and even more people were against it after the first trailer came out. Along with this, the original actress for the autistic character for the movie, Chloe Hayden, a girl on the spectrum, couldn't do the movie anymore because it was stressful and unpleasant. So instead of maybe listening to the people and canceling the movie, or at least to changing it somewhat to be more appealing to autistic people, they just replaced her with someone who doesn't have autism and who is one of Sia's background dancers, and well, the movie came out and it's still horribly offensive. And even without the autism aspect of the film, it's not a good film. Now you might have noticed I said aspect, because despite it being one of the main selling points of the movie, you know, it being this big empowerment film about what it's like to have autism, the autistic character music barely has anything to do in the movie. She doesn't go through any character arcs. She never has any growth or challenges. Hell, they don't even give her many interactions in the movie. She's only really the main person on screen when it's a musical segment because that way they can have wacky visuals. But besides that, she's just a prop for the film. The movie isn't about what it's like to have autism or what it's like to go through it with your family. It's what it's like to have an autistic person around while you just really ignore and have your own plot. This is a common trend in cinema. A movie about a disenfranchised group isn't really about the disenfranchised person and what they go through. It's more about what people around them go through because that person is disenfranchised. Well, you might say, is music at least a well-acted, accurate depiction of what autism is like? No, it is not. Music as a character feels like more of a racist caricature from the 40s than anything else. She constantly has her teeth out and her mouth open. She walks around weird and is constantly making noise, and it feels very degrading. Alongside with this, the movie picks and chooses what music has or does. What I mean by this is music is sometimes mute. Other times she will speak and it's just very inconsistent. Nothing feels natural about music. It's constant movie moments from her. She does one thing because it would be emotional at the time. She does another thing because it would be nice to end the movie off like that, even though they'd never establish certain things with her until it comes up in the plot. Another thing is they establish that she watches little kid shows, when shows like that can be very overstimulating for autistic people. Because you have autism, it doesn't mean you can't enjoy other shows or even adult ones, but it feels very degrading how she's only ever seen watching baby shows. And that's all based on music as a character. The movie itself is full of anti anti-climaxes and unlikable characters. The main character of the movie, Sue, is not a good character. She's a former drug addict that had to watch over her sister after her grandmother dies, and I get what Sia was going for. She has to grow alongside music so that way she can be the person she needs. But not only does music not get a character arc, Sue never ends hers. They establish early on in the movie that she owes money to a drug dealer, but they never effectively establish him as a threat. They make him both her friend and her main conflict that if she doesn't get the money, she will get punished for it. But you never get the sense of this is dangerous. And you aren't given a clear picture of what that really means, so you never really care. And it's the same way for all the characters. You're never given a reason to care, so you never care about them. They also have the magic black person trope in the movie. An old trope where you have a random person come out of nowhere in the movie to save the day because you need diversity. Diversity. And I would say it fits here. Ebo, the, you know, savior, comes out of nowhere in the film and had barely any buildup in the first 20 minutes of the movie, and he knows exactly what to do to save the day. And by save the day, I mean when music is having a tantrum, his first action is to pin her to the ground, which is not something you're supposed to do. Hi there. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what to do. Music. It's your friend, Ebo. 
You know me. You can't trust me. But I'm going to impress you now and make you feel sick. Come on. No, I am not. I am crushing her with my love. She will be all right. I was watching this, like I said, with friends who are on the spectrum, and one of them was physically shaking from it. Worst part is that this is treated as the solution for those situations, and they're glorified in the film. In fact, the same character later in the film says that his brother, who has autism, likes to be held down, which is a very fucking dangerous message to give to people, especially when younger people are going to watch this film because Sia made it, and are going to take away that this is how you handle situations like that. Especially when autistic people have died from being forcibly held down when it is not needed. Although to be fair, they do give him some flaws. Like they give him HIV randomly for no reason. It comes up for two scenes and it is not used for anything. It's just a thing that happens and goes nowhere. I didn't even realize he had it until my second viewing because it was not well established. Alongside with this, Sia decided to make it a plot point that he was cucked by his own brother and that he took his wife and that he is going to their wedding and it's how the movie ends and it's just a weird fucking note to end on. That's what the movie was building towards, the main lead going to his cuck wedding. Also, they never establish why the parents aren't around. At no point do they say they died or that they left or anything, which is important to give the context of why they aren't around to help. Another thing is I feel like they exploit Zoo's actress sexually a lot. She's constantly in her underwear or in skimpy outfits for no reason. And it's a random thing to constantly exploit in a serious film about autism. And the main plot of the movie is the romance between Ebo and Zoo. Most of the movie's dialogue revolve around these two. And it's not a good romance. Although not the worst relationship I've seen in cinema, there's barely any chemistry between them. Despite it being the only real plot point of the movie to have an ending, you're not given any reason to want the relationship to succeed. Ebo is almost likable, but Sue is just awful. I get that she's supposed to be a character that grows throughout the movie, but she doesn't. She starts the movie off by almost giving music away to the adoption system, but changes her mind when she gets a crush on Ebo, and then almost gives her away again at the end of the movie, but changes her mind when she goes to Ebo's brother's wedding so that she can see Ebo again. She holds her sister down too, which again you're not supposed to do. She's violent and she relapses. She's not someone that should be in charge of a child like music. And the movie never goes out of its way to tell you that. They act like it's fine. If it feels like I'm talking about random plot points that have nothing to do with what the movie was advertising, you know, autism, then yeah, the movie is just some crappy romance that has an autistic character shoved in for social brownie points. But it more so feels like Sia wanted to make a romance musical, but also wanted to mock people with autism throughout it. The movie doesn't treat autism like it's on a spectrum. They treat it like it's a singular burden that other people have to deal with. Not people with autism, mind you. They're too dumb to understand, according to this movie. But the people around them, they're the ones that go through, you know, conflict and problems. This movie is the equivalent of the autism is my superpower shirt. They might as well start it off the movie calling me the R slur. There are so many plot points and characters that go nowhere. There's a side character, Felix, who you're never given a clear idea on who he is or what he's supposed to be. He's someone the grandma paid to watch over music, I think. But the grandma's dead in the first three minutes of the film, and he just pops up every now and then in the film, but you never see him interact with music at all. And later in the film, he's just randomly killed off in one of the most out-of-nowhere scenes in cinematic history. It's just his dad being mad at him hugging a guy at boxing, so he punches him and he dies and it's so shitty looking that you don't even that it doesn't even look like he died nothing in this movie was earned felix's death isn't earned you don't have a reason to care and i would say they used it to forward the plot and just have cheap emotional moments but they don't use it for that he just dies and they ignore it it's just a character that didn't add anything to the film randomly getting killed off for for nothing music's inclusion in the film wasn't earned they
they never do anything with her except to either have a musical number and to make dumb faces because apparently all autistic people do that according to Sia. The romance in this film is not earned. You have no reason to support the relationship. The drug subplot goes nowhere. She literally loses his drugs because music got stung by a bee and they ignored him for the rest of the movie and the whole plot of if you don't get me the money I will do something doesn't happen. There's nothing satisfying in this movie. No satisfying ending or any real conclusion to any of the conflicts. This movie was made for no one. Despite how poorly filmed it looks and how basic the sets and costumes are, the film costed 16 million dollars. The film didn't even reach a million in the box office and has done very poorly visual release wise because it turns out people don't like how this out of touch 45 year old musician is making a mockery out of mental illness and it's like why even finish it when no one wanted it. All of the autism groups have bashed this movie for the portrayal of autism. The average moviegoer is going to listen to the crowd and when everyone's saying this movie is awful and a mockery of a disenfranchised group, you're not going to be that hyped for it. And the people that like Sia would have just bought the music. Even in context, they don't make much sense, and in my opinion, they're not that good either. So who cares? The only reason I can see for this movie still being put out, despite all of that, is just so that they could get nominated for the Golden Awards. Because despite all of that, Hollywood loves to stand behind a movie that sounds or looks progressive even when it isn't. It's what they did with cuties and now they're doing it with music. Is music the worst film I've ever seen? No. Is it the most offensive film I've ever seen? No. But music is a big middle finger to autism. They only portray it as this negative thing that people around them have to live with. And if you remove music as a character from the film, you know the main focal point of the film? The movie would barely change. Most of the plot points could stay intact. They only added her in for social brownie points. Uh, that's uh, that's it for the movie. I mean, there's stuff I glossed over, like the musical scenes, which were either very random or very on the nose. There's a song that literally goes, I'm insecure because she's insecure. It's very deep. But like I said, the main problem is the way they portrayed autism. The movie was very triggering to my friends. I would hate to imagine what it was like for people who had no idea about how awful this movie was or those scenes. And uh, let's just say I'm glad this bombed. <laughs> Don't buy the movie, it's awful. Even without it being offensive, it's just boring. I had to watch it twice to understand certain things, and the movie is almost two hours of nothing. And an hour of it could be cut out, and you would still have the same plot. And if that doesn't show how she didn't really care about representing autistic people, I don't know what will. That said, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. As always, I want to thank my members. Their names will be in the description as well, with a special thank you to Cinef Productions, First Spectre, Steely, Semper Fidelis, Waffy Waffles, and Ura Marine Corps. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.